So everyone, Sean here, and today is my chance to sit down and talk to you guys about my first Fire Emblem game on the Switch, and my first main Fire Emblem game in general. So this is overall indeed a journey. This was indeed an interesting one that took me about three months, and I only just completed Golden Deer. Mind you, this game is really long. I've already almost put 100 hours for just one faction. If you want to get the true experience and all, you gotta play the other factions plus one more story, I think. But anyway, we can get into more of that later. I think it's obvious at this point that me pouring this many hours into my first Fire Emblem game, it's safe to say that I really like this game. Not completely in love with it, but it's a good first title in my opinion. Now to talk about my personal little history with Fire Emblem as a whole, how I interact with it first, and how I cope with it and reacted to it, how I felt about it throughout the, throughout the years. Uh, the first time I was exposed to Fire Emblem in general was Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, which was introducing Roy and Marth to me in my gaming life. I thought they were pretty cool to play, uh, especially with Roy, which was probably a lot of gamers. You know the saying, Roy's our boy. Ever since then, it started to grow with Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, and from there it just snowballed. Then Fire Emblem Awakening comes along and really seals the deal, making it one of the Nintendo titles that is here to stay. Now I understand that Fire Emblem came from a long history just like any other games during the NES days or the Super NES days. Uh, of course it was still a tactical RPG back then and then now. It kind of went through the whole Final Fantasy treatment with the name changes and using the what the third game or something like that to bring to the states as the first game for the for the west and you know how that goes right it goes super confusing and you don't know what's really the first title that sort of thing but either way it has a history just like any other games the only fire emblem related games i exposed myself to before all this was fire emblem heroes which was the famous mobile game that came from nintendo first and it took off since and it probably was the reason why nintendo has continued with mobile games in the first place with other of course reasons to kind of help build those blocks to become another mobile game sort of capital sort of thing anyway uh, I was also exposed to Fire Emblem Warriors, and lastly, this one's a weird case, but it had Fire Emblem nonetheless in, in some shape or form with Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Man, that game is quite special to me. And I guess all the Smash games, if you want to even count those in, but anywho, after so many handheld titles and some console games, we get this. Fire Emblem Three Houses on the Nintendo Switch. Like I said, I really liked the game as I thoroughly enjoyed what the game had to offer. The graphics are much on a stylish side and all in all are charming. It is not without saying that it can use some improving. Most of the character models do look impressive for the art style, but there are some that could have used a little more tweaking like my favorite female character or wife I guess you can say, Shamir. Call me picky. However, sometimes character models can be just messy during the battles. Now, I think the world itself during the battles could have used a little more to bring out the life of the environments. It just leans a little more on the bland side of things. I can't, I guess they just wanted to like kind of just throw it out there and represent something like, oh, here's a forest. Oh, here's a city slash castle sort of environment. I will say that the monastery is definitely a looker in comparison to the rest of the environment, but even there it could use some improving as well. However, with that said about the graphics, the gameplay definitely makes up for the mixed feelings or the mixed bag of nature of the graphics. The tactical role-playing gameplay is what I enjoyed and dearly missed during my early days with games such as Advanced Wars. It's just simple and yet so much satisfaction is to be had with this game. And the combat animations are just funny at times, but I still have a good time watching them mauling the enemy. Something about moving your units to attack and eliminating them enemies is just plain old fun. Especially when you get those critical hits, man. Oh, 
気を待ってたヒルシクラッセを甘く見たかマリアンズ・パラローグ which for those who don't know パラローグ are kind of like character side stories and battles that go along with it was where that flavor of Fire Emblem really started to set in in my taste buds having to land a crucial critical hit to finish off the boss when Marianne was just on the brink of death man that was a great moment and I don't think I had that recorded oh but oh well I just know that battle was the one that made me say yeah I like Fire Emblem I think it's another game from the Nintendo franchise I would like to stick consistently with in the future. Not only the battles are fun, but managing your units at the monastery is the other half of the highlights personally for me. Watching your units grow is another great fulfilling process. As in other Fire Emblem games, there are classes to choose from for yourself and the rest of your members of whatever house you choose. Leveling them up in each class can feel long but makes them that much more broken or powerful which is a big part of what makes this whole process fun. As a young professor for your students, you can teach them what to focus on so that they can reach to that next class that you so desire for them. This game implements the calendar system that is very reminiscent of the popular JRPG of recent years, Persona 5. That means you have to really pick and choose carefully of what to do to level up for everyone including yourself. This allows more thinking but also potentially adds more hours on top of the normal game itself. These parts I had a hard time being quick and decisive to pick what stat to raise so that they can go on to that class I want them to go into later on. But again that's what makes this half that much fun. You have to think about what you're growing and what your goals are unlike the conventional JRPGs. Would I want to see this mechanic spread across other JRPGs? Only if it makes sense with the theme of that game. So in other words, it just depends. Here it definitely does and you'll know why. Another important element in these portions is to recruit students from other houses. You have to meet specific requirements for each student. You can pick and choose whoever depending on who looks appealing to your tastes but they all specialize in something so keep that in mind when recruiting. I've come to learn that early in the game recruiting your favorite students should be your game plan along with leveling up with the rest of your house. It was almost too late for me to realize this but I managed to recruit the people I wanted in my crew right in the nick of time. One of the newly added features in Three Houses is the Divine Pulse which allows you to turn back time when if you make a mistake, let's say you make a wrong move, you, you move your unit to the wrong place or you forgot to do this or that. Or of course whenever one of your precious units die on the battlefield. You can activate it by hitting one of the trigger buttons. However, in modern Fire Emblem games, you can turn that off and turn on casual mode like I did for this playthrough because I just really don't like the idea of that, of permanently losing my mates throughout the playthrough. It, it was just stabbed me right in the heart, metaphorically. Yes, there is the Divine Pulse to counter that if you want that challenge, but at the same time, you kind of counter that moment but once you run out of divine pulses and there is still that possibility of permadeath amongst your units people just go ahead and hard reset the game anyway so i don't want to go through that annoyance so i just might as well turn on casual mode just to you know for the sake of convenience now let's talk about the story of this game for a second at the beginning you have the choice between black eagles the blue lions and the golden deer from the moment it was announced, I had my eyes on Golden Deer because Claude looked fucking cool at the time. It was that simple. The story is then divided into two parts, the Academy and the War. Each house has the same Academy story for the most part, I believe. However, the war saga is where things get crazy for each house and they're all different so that's actually pretty awesome. The overall story, at least for Golden Deers anyway, had great moments and sad ones as well. And I can say that I enjoyed it mostly, but that's not the actual winner here. Stick with me here. The individually crafted stories for each member of your house 
or whoever you recruit as well, are what really want it for me. They all offer unique backgrounds and enjoyable moments with each scene from bonding with them with your main character. It can range from being wholesome, funny, sad, or just plain deranged at times, so you want to feel for them. That's where I fell in love with a number of these characters. Among them are Petra, Bernadetta, Mercedes, Caspar, Claude, of course, Lysithia, Shamir, naturally, then someone like Raphael really grew on me more than I ever thought. From the beginning, I just thought he'd just be your average muscle head, but he really shows to be wise and funny in his own way, and charming at that. And as someone who works out several times a week, I can relate to this guy. You can't just forget about his shirt just being on the cusp of bursting from his chest. I mean, come on, somebody get a bigger shirt for this guy. He is amongst my favorite when it comes to the support cutscenes, especially when he's talking with Flame. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> His face. It's such a perfect like expression. <laughs> uh, I love Raphael. He's he's really awesome. Speaking of support cutscenes, Fire Emblem also brings the social linking mechanic to this game, just like previous titles, meaning that you can bond with your students not only for the benefit of each other's stats while on the battlefield with the whole link stats thing that you can do when your characters are grouped together, it can actually raise up your attack when you're about to uh, attack the enemy, but also to watch cutscenes that help see how each character's relationships flesh out with others with each rank up. These are a treat to watch and listen to. By the end of the game, you can pick who will be your romance partner after reaching S rank. I had to go with Shamir, but not without thinking long and hard by the end because the character's relationships with one another when they are maxed out made things a lot harder to choose. It's just that good. I wanted to pair up other characters such as Raphael and Bernie, Surreal and Lysithia, Sylvain and Ingrid, so on and so forth. It's kind of like playing house or whatever with your action figures or dolls when you're a kid or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy here. Of course, you still have to remember the calendar system, so pick and choose wisely. Not only these characters grow stat-wise, but they also grow through a great deal of character progression, especially during these time skips. In general, the characters here are well-crafted, lovable, they have great designs, and fun to take out into the battlefield. Now other little things like navigating through the menu, the traveling around in the monastery, fast traveling, and getting to place to place and stuff like that, it's all you know, smooth for the most part, but when you're running, I do notice a weird kind of loop going on. I don't know if the game is loading or if the running animations is not properly looped or something. I don't know. There's, there's just something weird about that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But on to the next thing. It's great voice acting and soundtrack only supplement all these great experiences I've already talked about before. English and Japanese options are available, so I naturally stuck with Japanese once again. Not entirely terrible for English, it is certainly entertaining in its own right, but these options are always great. Keep them coming, Nintendo. Players should also appreciate that every bit of text has a voice behind it to go along with it, and they are a lot of dialogue to go through. So if you enjoy a lot of voice acting, this is your treat. I enjoyed the music, especially during my battles, as it was catchy enough for me to come along with it. It was just the cherry on top of this great Sunday. Not to mention the recent update with the DLC just 
sprinkled more awesome stuff on top of it. So more pluses for that. My only complaints here are relatively minor besides the graphics. One is that the classes could have used just a little more, especially with the brawler class for the females not being there. I wanted to make Flane a punch girl, damn it. Other classes sort of allow this, but the outfit and everything else could have completed that wish, you know? Also, for a class called Grappler, I don't really see a whole lot of that. I want to do a big brain buster on a guy mounted on a horse or something like that. I don't know, something ridiculous. Maybe do something like that on the monster. If Tifa can do that to a giant dragon in Final Fantasy VII, I mean, Come on. It looked ridiculous, yeah, but we're playing a video game. Like, have some fun here. I also found some loose ends in the stories, uh, some of the paralogs and stuff like that, uh, especially with one involving with Mercedes and the Death Knight. I don't know, maybe I might have missed something, but I don't know, I didn't really see that, how it all played out, but I, I guess, oh well. The next one, I guess, is kind of spoiler-esque, just throwing it out there. Anywho, during the time skip, all the major characters go through a dramatic change in appearance, except for the Church of Seros, including Shamir, call me picky, again, but I would love to see their time skip designs. One could say that they already went through that phase of growing, so they already went through that, that sort of time skip of their own sort of thing. My expectations there led me to disappointment. Many cutscenes, while voiced brilliantly, are stuck with characters in static backgrounds. Some say it may look like a CGI puppet show. It just doesn't complement the mood of the story, even during the more serious moments, when it absolutely deserves it. I understand there's a lot of dialogue and cutscenes to go through, like, there's characters talking to each character with dialogue to go along with it, but at least make the main story cutscenes a little more dynamic. While it is nice to have these cinematic cutscenes, just weird to see only a handful of characters, mostly your main character, Byleth, Claude, Edelgard, and Dimitri, and a few others too, being rendered in CGI. It just kind of reminds me of like, Kirby right back at you with only Kirby in CGI most of the time with no given explanation. I don't know why I don't know why they do that. It, it, there is a reason, but I just I just don't understand. I'm sure there is a reason, but I just don't understand from my own standpoint. I feel like it just should be one way or the other. All CGI or all hand-drawn animations. At the end of things, Fire Emblem Three Houses is a great game on its own, the TV and handheld. It's a perfect game on the Switch since you can relax in its turn-based nature that naturally requires no execution, it's just pointing and clicking. You'll get sucked into the grinding and progressing through the story. It is a big commitment to 100% complete it. At least the main story is still more than enjoyable for someone like me to, you know, really want to know what would happen next. And again, this is, you know, from a standpoint of Golden Deer. There is variety when it comes to the story with each house. They even took some big risks to make things really interesting than your average JRPG. For me, the visuals are a little shaky, but decent. The gameplay and the characters are what makes this game great and make up for it. Also, thank God Three Houses was not separated into three versions, and then there is the final version, similar to what Fire Emblem Fates gone through. It's all in one tiny but awesome package. Now, the score for Fire Emblem Three Houses deserves from me an 8 out of 10, a solid 8 at that. It's the perfect game to take it on the go or play it at home. It's a blast to play as a tactical JRPG with a good story to follow through, but you'll love it for the characters really. I highly recommend it as a fan of JRPGs and Switch exclusives. Now maybe some say that Awakening is still the better game and blah 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 whatever, but I still think this is a great addition to the Fire Emblem Collection. So, Fire Emblem fans, I think it's safe to say that they'll like it too. What blows my mind is that the main game has so much to offer already, but the game still offers an expansion pass which will include some story expansion. 
which is insane. I hope to see characters from other Fire Emblem games or new classes perhaps, you know, give the female characters the brawling classes that we've all kind of egging for. Anyway, that's pretty much all I gotta say for Fire Emblem Three Houses for this review video. I really enjoyed it, I really am glad I was able to pick this up and at least complete one house just to kind of, you know, see what the game has to offer. And I know what what it you know what I'm getting myself into, and I'm having absolutely fun with it. I just barely started on the Blue Lions playthrough, but it'll be a while for the story expansions to come out anyway. So I have some time, but there are just so many other games I want to you know just mess around with and stuff. So hope for me, it's just really hard to ju kind of juggle in between. And, but anyway, blue, the Blue Lions is my you know next one up, and. I really want to see how that one goes, and especially now I know what to do with the early part of the gameplay, and then the War Saga. Oh boy, especially with uh, our boy Dimitri, what he goes through. But anyways, anyways for reals, that's all I gotta say. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for my review for Three Houses. Uh, if you have any comments about Three Houses, what do you guys think about the game, or do you guys still think about picking this game up for the Switch, you know, especially for the holidays? Leave me down below in the comment section below. I love to read them and perhaps reply to them. Those comments are always welcome when it comes to, you know, sharing your thoughts, you know, about related topics and stuff. Well, anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe as always. It really helps with the channel and really appreciate it, guys. And don't forget to check out all the other links in the description below, including my Twitch, Twitter, and other sponsorships and stuff like that that would help out this uh, channel here. And you guys get some of that, something out of it. So yeah, you know that's you know it's a win-win situation for all sides here. But uh, anyways, your view viewership is always much appreciated. So with that, I would like to conclude this review for Fire Emblem Three Houses. I'll see you guys in the next video. Sean out.